This is the dumping ground. I can only attend the Living Museum during weekday mornings from 9.30 till 11.30 a.m. No longer doing figurative oil paintings, visceral images have been deemed inappropriate and grounds for censure and possible re-diagnosis. I move further away from standard painting to abstraction and conceptualism via monochromatic body prints. The first morning is dedicated to canvas prep, the following morning a commitment to the painting of the body and the image press. I complete a series of large-scale, life-sized paintings in which I abandon the traditional artist's tools and use my body as a brush. It's very liberating and cleansing, until the cleanup, that is. I'm fortunate to have my studio in the very rear of the mammoth space where, when done, I walk nude, undetected, to a nearby lavatory with a slop sink big enough to stand in and wash the latex and acrylic paint off my body. These black and white body prints, depicting the figure of a man trapped in various painful states of arrest, are all I can do artistically without scrutiny from those who are looking for excuses to keep me locked up. They are much more cathartic than my regular paintings. They are transformative. I call the series Body and Soul. I am making a personal statement about race polarization, the dissonance within myself as a product of a multiracial home, as well as providing commentary on life as a black man in a white American mental institution. My body prints are eerily reminiscent of the 1970s work of black installation artist David Hammonds. Even though I had never heard of him before, Dr. Martin pointed out the striking similarities. Very good, Isa, the doctor enthuses. This is like conceptual outsider art. The outsider art boom is growing in the 1990s. And while even the living museum trucks in this, and I marketed myself for that genre in my initial artistic emergence, I don't feel my work truly fits that mold. My output is not obsessive, naive, primitive, psychotic, or produced by an old, frail sharecropper, as is usually expected from the artists tagged with the label. Many outsider art collectors troll the nursing homes, mental hospitals, and dilapidated shacks of the rural South for next month's flavor, largely in the hopes that the artist has died without a will or surviving family member smart enough to muscle in on them and stop them from cashing in big time. <laughs> 